Acetabular impingement syndrome, more commonly referred to as femoral acetabular impingement, FAI syndrome, is a clinical condition where abnormal contact between the femoral head-neck junction and the acetabular rim leads to hip joint damage. It predominantly affects young to middle-aged active adults and is a well-recognized cause of early-onset osteoarthritis of the hip. Patients with femoral acetabular impingement typically present with insidious onset groin pain, which may radiate to the lateral hip, buttock, or thigh. Pain is often exacerbated by hip flexion, internal rotation, and prolonged sitting, and may limit participation in sports or other physical activity. The classic symptom is the C sign, where the patient cups their hand over the lateral hip to describe the location of the pain. Mechanical symptoms such as clicking, catching, or locking may occur, suggesting associated labral or chondral injury. So let's look at the pathophysiological concept. Femoral acetabular impingement occurs due to abnormal bony morphology that leads to repetitive microtrauma at the femoral acetabular junction. There are two primary morphologies. You can develop a CAM type lesion, which is a aspherical femoral head or a bony bump at the head neck junction, which causes shear force on the acetabular cartilage and labrum during flexion and rotation of the hip. Or you can develop pensa type lesion, where you have over coverage of the femoral head by the acetabulum you get essentially a deep socket or retroversion. And this results in linear contact between the labrum and femoral neck. You can also have a mixed type where most patients really have features of both cam and pincer impingement. Over time though, this abnormal contact can cause labral tears, chondral delamination, and progressive joint degeneration. Diagnosis is made based on a combination of clinical features and imaging. So on examination, pain is typically reproduced by the FADIA test, where you flex the hip, adduction of the hip, and internal rotation, FADIA. Plain anteroposterior pelvic x-rays and lateral hip views are used to assess the shape of the femoral head and acetabular coverage. A cam lesion appears as loss of the femoral head neck offset, as shown by this x ray, while a pincer lesion are seen as acetabular over coverage or a crossover sign, as shown in this x ray. MRI or MR arthrogram can evaluate the labrum and cartilage for associated pathology, and a CT scan may be used for detailed 3D assessment, particularly pre-surgically. Differential diagnosis for this groin-type pain or pathology or similar presentation include acetabular dysplasia, transient osteoporosis of the hip, avascular necrosis, or stress fracture, and extra-articular cause of hip pain, such as iliopsoas tendinopathy or athletic pubalgia. A careful history and appropriate imaging help differentiate these entities, and really, MRI is very useful in this case. Initial management for femoral acetabular impingement syndrome is non-surgical. And these non-surgical managements include activity modification, so avoiding positions that exacerbate the impingement, such as deep squat or prolonged sitting. Physiotherapy focuses on core strengthening and improving hip range of motion. Analgesia, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, can also be used. Intraarticular corticosteroid injections 
for symptom relief and diagnostic purposes may also be used. If symptoms persist despite conservative measures, hip arthroscopy may be considered. Surgery involves remodeling the femoral head-neck junction, osteoplasty, and or acetabular rim trimming, along with labral repair if needed. The outcomes are generally favorable in well-selected patients, especially if performed before the onset of advanced osteoarthritis. In summary, femoral acetabular impingement syndrome is an important and increasingly recognized cause of hip pain in young adults. Early identification and management are key to preserving joint health and preventing the progression to osteoarthritis.